going on, Quotation Nation? Quote by Lee coming at you with a brand new Pokemon Sun and Moon analysis video. I'm so sorry for the videos being erratic and not on time. We've been very busy, but we're going to be covering the new Pokemon that were released with the new trailer. So we're over here on the Pokemon website, and we can see that we have the trailer video. If you want to watch the trailer, go ahead uh, and check it out on YouTube. The link will be in the description for that. But we're going to just check out these new Pokemon and check out our uh, opinions and thoughts on them. So first, it gives us a little bit of a closer look at Magearna, the artificial Pokemon with a heart. So let's go ahead and check out its details. So category is artificial Pokemon. Its height is 3 feet and 3 inches, weighs 177.5 pounds. It's a steel fairy type with the ability soul heart and so in the video you get to see a new uh, you get to see that new ability you get to see what it actually does in battle so go ahead and definitely check that out we're just gonna skim through this real quick so Magirna is a mythical Pokemon that was created by a scientist of uncommon genius 500 years ago it has the power to perceive the emotions thoughts and feelings of other Pokemon if Magirna's real body is uh, Magirna's real body is the spherical construction in its chest called the Soul Heart, created by a scientist who gathered the life energy from Pokemon. So this evil scientist pretty much gathered the life from other Pokemon and created a Pokemon. He's like an evil scientist. Kind of crazy. Um, we're going to go down and take a look here at his ability. Magirna's ability is the Soul Heart ability, a new ability that no previous Pokemon has had. Soul Heart has the effect of raising Magirna's special attack by one stage each time another Pokemon in the area faints. This new ability, one that can be put to good use in battle. So in the trailer it shows uh, a double battle and a Pangoro uh, takes out an Eevee on your side. So you have an Eevee and a Magirna in the trailer. The Eevee gets taken out and Magirna's special attack is raised. So it's pretty much Moxie for uh, special attack, except she doesn't have to be the one to knock out the Pokemon. It could be any Pokemon that faints will raise her special attack, which is really, really great. She's definitely going to be in Ubers, which will be cool. And then let's see. If the user, if you use the new QR scanner function in Pokemon Sun and Moon to scan in the corresponding QR code, you will be able to obtain the mythical Pokemon Magirna. Magirna will be a special ally that you can put to work on your behalf in the world of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. And so if you want to get that code, check out uh, check back at Pokemon.com slash Sun and Moon for details on where to find the QR code to get Magirna. So that'll be really cool. Everybody uh, who goes to the website and figures out how to get Magirna will be able to get Magirna, which would be really nice. Now we have so we have those, and now we have these three new Pokemon that were added into the trailer. So, we got a very brief look at them during the video, so we're going to take an in-depth uh, look at Picky Peck, which is the Woodpecker Pokemon. His design looks awesome. If you remember from the very first announcement trailer, this was the bird Pokemon that had the, hol uh, the exoskeleton graphics that they were creating during the trailer. And it looks like he's a normal flying type. He weighs 2.6 pounds. He is one foot tall. And he has the ability Keen Eye, which is something we know, and Skill Link, which is something we know. And I think Skill Link is a really cool ability that will put a lot of use to him. Possible for a third um, hidden ability, but we'll have to see on that. So yeah, so we have Picky Peck, the Woodpecker Pokemon. Picky Peck can strike 16 times a second with its beak. One Mississippi. That's 16. Right there. It, it hit you 16 times. That's kind of ridiculous. That's like in the Pokemon anime, they said that Diglett can uh, go underground and appear up at the speed of light, which is ridiculous why he's not the fastest Pokemon in the game. Because if he's going at the speed of light, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, these strikes are powerful enough to not only drill through hardwood, but to even shatter stone. So he's a really strong uh, bird, and he does have two evolutions, which will be cool. Now, 
Uh, Pikiback will attack this in Pokemon by zipping seeds at them. These shots have enough strength to embed the seeds in tree trunks. So uh, zipping seeds at them, that makes me think that he's going to be able to learn the bullet seed ability. And with skill link, it'll always hit five times. That's pretty cool. Fury attack, I think, is something that he will also be able to pick up. Possibly they'll come up with a new uh, move that hits two to five times. That's a flying type attack. Who knows? <clears throat> now, I just want to share a couple thoughts on Pikiback. So... It says that it is the normal flying type, and my thoughts are that they're not going to give him a second typing like they did for Fletchling. They're going to just keep him normal flying, and here's why I think that. So, you're already given the choice to start out with a grass flying Pokemon. So, I don't think that they're going to give you another uh, Pokemon that has a second typing that's really good. So, a normal flying seems pretty uh, good to me. Most of the flyers, most of the starting flyers in any of the Pokemon games are normal flying. And so that's why I think that he'll stay normal flying. Just because they don't want to have to compete with a Rowlet. Because then someone will be like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and play Populeo because I can get this flying fairy type or flying uh, whatever, you know, early in the game. So I think that they're going to just keep it normal flying throughout each of its evolution stage. Um, if, they, if they decide to give it second typing besides normal, then great, I'm all for it. I think that's awesome. I just don't think that that's what's going to go down because they already have Rowlet. All right, now we have this beautiful, beautiful being named Young Goose. He is the Lord Loitering Pokemon. He's a normal type, 1 foot 4 inches, 13 pounds, with Strong Jaw, which we already know it does, powers up Biting type moves, Crunch, Ice Fang, etc. And he has a new ability, Stake Out, which we will get to. So, Young Goose is a big eater that is never satisfied. The majority of its long body is given over to its stomach and its digestion is swift, so it's always hungry. It has strong fangs, so it can crush and consume the hardest of objects. And he looks awesome. He's just got this menacing, evil grin on his face. His hair kind of looks like Donald Trump, honestly. I think a lot of people will nickname this guy Donald Trump or just Trump or something like that because he kind of resembles him. But I really do like the uh, Mongoose design. I think he's really cool. The only other Mongoose Pokemon that we have is Zangoose. And Zangoose is pretty freaking awesome, let's be honest. Um, each young goose chooses its own particular route for searching out prey. It stalks along this route searching for food until it's exhausted, at which point it drops and sleeps wherever it may be. It's thought that these Pokemon decide their routes based on safety so that there is no risk in falling asleep at any time. So they are a cool little pro uh, Pokemon that choose its own routes. So I'm, I'm guessing by this description that we'll be able to find them on multiple routes. Now we're going to get into something that's actually really cool. So Young Goose is not a Pokemon that is native to the Alola region. It was brought to the region to help deal with the explosive population of a certain other Pokemon. And now Young Goose are commonly seen around the Alola region. So, I did a little bit of researching because I wanted to know what that meant. So, if you don't know, uh, Mongoose, they eat a lot of different things. They eat insects. They're, they're a predator. So they, they eat insects small rodents, birds, but their main source of food is actually snakes. They eat different snakes. And so that makes me think that they brought uh, young goose into the Alola region to take care of a species of snake. So I think we're going to be getting a new snake Pokemon. And I think that's awesome. So I looked up uh, two different common uh, snakes in Hawaii because the Alola region is based off of Hawaii. So there was uh, one that was, I can't remember exactly the name, it was just like this little brown snake. Uh, it was just like a normal kind of looking snake, right? But then they have a yellow-bellied sea snake, which is a very common snake, and it looks really cool, really menacing. So I think that they're going to have some kind of sea snake, uh, maybe a water poison type snake that will be all over the, the, the Alola region. And I think that makes awesome sense and it connects it uh, to be able to bring in a Pokemon that eats snakes to take care of their population. Uh, I think that's just really cool. I think that they're definitely going to have a new snake Pokemon or they're just going to have a whole bunch of Arbok and 
Ekans, which is cool, but not as cool as introducing a new snake. So I'm I'm almost 100% positive that they're going to have a new snake. Some young goose have an ability no other Pokemon discovered has previously had. This ability is known as Stake Out. So this new ability is super cool. So pay attention to what it says right here. With the Stake Out ability, this Pokemon's moves can deal twice the normal damage to any Pokemon that switch in or enter the field of mid-battle. So let's say you're playing a 6v6 online battle. I have my young goose out and you don't have a Pokemon that you want to deal with it, you decide to U-turn or to just hard switch into the a new Pokemon. So my attack can, that's what it says, it says can. It doesn't say that it will deal. Um, I'm hoping that it, if it is 100% chance, then that's going to be great. But this says that it can deal twice the normal amount. So you switch in a new Pokemon and it can deal twice the amount of damage. So you have to be careful what you switch into because you don't know what this young goose's attacks are going to be. And then since this Pokemon is so common in the Alola region, it's easy to catch one. But this Pokemon has a terrible temper when hungry and demands a whopping amount of food. So that is young goose. He's got awesome design and I love his new abilities. And I think that he's going to be a very, very powerful Pokemon. Uh, he'll probably only have one evolution like most uh, early game normal type Pokemon like Rattata, Sentret, um, Zigzagoon, stuff like that. So I doubt that he'll have multiple evolutions. I think he'll just have one evolution, which is fine by me. I think that they could really utilize him. He looks like he's going to be a fast, physical, kind of sweeper type of Pokemon. Um, yeah, so that is Young Goose. Super excited. And now we have Grubbin. And Grubbin is the Bug-type Pokemon. Pretty uh, pretty simple. I really like his design actually a lot better than Spupa was in X and Y. He is the larva Pokemon uh, type is bug. He's one foot four inches. That's a big bug. Uh, he weighs nine pounds and he has the ability Swarm, so nothing really new. Uh, the only cool thing is Grubbin relies on its sturdy jaws weapon in battle and as a tool for burrowing through the earth. Grubbin loves electricity, which is why it can be found near power plants and substations. So. Uh, I think that's pretty evident that it's going to have an electricity uh, typing added to it with its evolutions, similar to Joltik and Galvantula, which is cool. We don't have very many electric bug types of Pokemon. I think that's actually the only one is good Joltik and Galvantula. So I think that's really cool. I'm excited to see his designs, and hopefully they give him a hidden ability that will actually be a little more better for competitive. Now, we have one other thing that we want to cover in this video. From the trailer, we got to take a look at the new battle type, which is going to be Battle Royale. So let's take a look at the details. So a new format, Battle Royale. Pokemon Sun and Moon feature the addition of a new battle format that has never been seen before, the Battle Royale in the past. Excuse me. The battle royale in the past, Pokemon battles have generally been battles on one tr uh, battles of one trainer against another. But in these battle royales, four players will be divided in a four-way battle that pits each trainer against each other in three uh, of other three in a furious melee. So it's very similar. Uh, if you like Pokemon, you watch Pokemon, you have probably seen. Uh, Pokemon free for alls up on YouTube with some of the bigger name Pokemon players like King Nappy, Shitty Penguin, Game Boy Luke, and others um, who are big time YouTubers. So this uh, this is something that has really been inspired by the Pokemon community, which is really cool. It shows that the Pokemon community they uh, they watch the community, they watch us, and they see and they're learning from us, and it's really cool. And so Pokemon free for all. This is a little bit different than the free-for-all that you would know it as. Uh, instead of last person standing, this is a little bit different. So in Battle Royale, four trainers are jumbled in a battle together, but the rules are simple. Each of the four trainers chooses three Pokemon and sends one Pokemon into battle at a time. The battle is over at the end of any turn when all of the Pokemon of one trainer has fainted. So whether it's 1v1v1, everybody's lost two Pokemon, or... Three people still have three Pokemon, one person loses all the Pokemon. It just depends 
<clears throat> that's when the game is over. So, and then they have a different kind of scoring system. So let's let's say trainer A has three Pokemon, trainer B has three Pokemon, and trainer C has two Pokemon, and trainer four or D lost all his Pokemon. So the game is over, right? Trainer A knocked out three Pokemon, so he'll get three points for that, and he also gets three po three points for having three Pokemon left. And so it's kind of like that. You can fill in the rest. It's a different scoring system, so that's how people will be able to win and whatnot. So while these are simple rules, they also allow players a new way to enjoy Pokemon battles, one where many new strategies may be born, as each player must try to predict who will attack whom or way acting to save us player who is in a pinch in order to aim for the number one position. So that is going to be awesome. We're definitely going to try to get as many different content creators on the channel to be able to play with them doing this free-for-all and just having a really good time and playing with the Pokemon community and it's going to be super exciting. There's one other thing that we wanted to look at. So we're going to go back to Pokemon and we'll take a look at Solgaleo and Lunala. They introduced this. Um, Solgaleo and Lunala hold a vital key to your adventure in Pokemon Sun and Moon. These two Pokemon are legendary Pokemon and they play a crucial role in the story, but their place in the world is still wrapped in mystery. And so, they have two different new forms for Solgaleo and Lunala. And so we have Solgaleo's Radiant Sun Phase and Lunala's Full Moon Sun Phase. Uh, full Moon Phase. So we're just going to take a quick look at these. And since it, so, and so look at this. He's the Sun Pokemon. I don't know why he has an E. That's kind of cool. The Sun E Pokemon. Sun Pokemon. He's 11 feet and 2 inches in height, weighs 507 pounds. He's Psychic Steel type, which we've already covered in our other video, and he has the full metal body. Since ancient times, Solgaleo has been honored as an emissary of the sun. It is referred to with reverence as the beast that devours the sun. Solgaleo's body holds a vast amount of energy, and it shines with light when, it is, when it's active. It has a flowing mane with remarkable resemblance to the sun. Its, its signature move is Sun Steel Strike, an attack that charges at an opponent with the force of a meteor disregarding the target's ability. Okay, so that's something new that we were able to learn right there, and the trailer doesn't show that. So this will disregard any ability, which is really, really cool. And Soul Galio's body, uh, ability is Full Metal Body, a new ability that no previous Pokemon has had. With Full Metal Body, a Pokemon's stats will not be lowered by the effects of an, of an opponent's moves or ability. So that's exactly what we talked about during the last trailer. No secondaries from any Pokemon's moves or any abilities will affect the stat changes on Solgaleo. And now we'll just take a quick look at Lunala before we let you guys go. This video is actually getting a little longer than I wanted it to. Since ancient times, Lunala has been honored as an emissary of the moon, referred to reverence as the beast that calls the moon. Blah, blah, blah. You guys can read this all on your own. I'm just going to link it in the description, honestly. Lunala's ability, Shadow Shield, a new ability that no one has. With the Shadow Shield ability, a Pokemon will take less damage from an attack that lands when the Pokemon has full HP. So it's very similar to multi-scale in that regard. So, thank you guys so much for watching this video. It's been super cool covering all this Pokemon stuff. If you like this video, go ahead, leave it a like. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, check out my other videos, and please subscribe. It really does help and support me to want to make more videos for you guys. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and check out my links in the description, my Twitch, and my Twitter down below. Uh, and You can follow me on Twitter so that you can see when new videos go live and other stuff that's happening in my life. Again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, as always, guys, if you're not hydrating, you're dehydrating. Quote by Lee.